So now I, I would like to introduce to you our second uh, presenter or speaker for today's webinar. And this is my uh, other brother from a different mother, Dr. Robert Horwitz from New York. So what should I say and introduce uh, Robert? So he graduated from uh, Columbia University in 1982 concentrating in periodontics and fixed prostodontics. He then completed a one-year uh, general practice residency and then finished a two-year specialty training program uh, in Perio at uh, New York University and Manhattan VA Hospital. He then began placing implants as early as 1985. He is engaged in numerous uh, research projects, uh, conducting lots of uh, hands-on courses, some of them with me. He's a clinical assistant professor in uh, NYU, both at the Department of Perio and Oral Surgery, and also in Biomaterials. And if I would need to read more of his CV, we will finish up the time that was allocated for this webinar. So without further ado, my brother, you, the stage is Thank yours. Thank you, David, for the, the wonderful introduction and the beautiful cases. And Ziv, thank you not only for the introduction, but for teaching me most of the advanced topics that we'll be covering today. And you and I will be lecturing on on Friday and Saturday and when we lecture together in November. So without further ado, I'm going to continue talking about guided surgery, where we were then and where we are today. When we think about the most important aspects in implant dentistry, what we look at as periodontists is how to get the implant to support the proper prosthetic device with enough bone around it, with enough keratinized tissue around it, and most importantly, how to get the patient to accept treatment. And in all of that, the software from Clara Nav and Navident and using the dynamic surgical navigation that we already saw from David and we'll see in some of my cases, all of that is going to help me get the results that I want in my patients. So if we think about the learning curve, dentists aren't the only ones using this type of technology. So when you think about it, the first time we did any procedure in dentistry, we didn't know it proficiently right off the bat. But I will tell you, it took a lot less, a lot fewer than 60 cases to get up to speed. And I have to thank Beth, and I have to thank the rest of the Navident team for spending time in my office, hands-on with me to get us up to speed. And I will say, and Beth will back me up on this, by the third day, we were doing cases on our own, even without them holding our hands. So if we think about navigation, what we learned in implant dentistry, what started out with Lenny Linkow and Shishev in the 50s, and then moved on into Branamark, who made it more scientific and more popular in the 80s. And then everyone that followed is we went from just placing implant in holes to real prosthetically guided surgery and prosthetically guided bone regeneration. So what we need is more precision, as David was talking about in the literature. So we want smaller flaps. We want better ability to control the precise placement of the implant based on where we need it to support that restorative device, to give us the patient what they want. Static guides don't always give us the ability to do that. Yes, we are getting better and better with the guides, but to drill extra holes in our patient, as David said, may not give us the exact accuracy we want, and we may have to wait weeks and spend hundreds of dollars to get those. Again, they're irrigation issues. We may not be able to elevate the flap where we want it, and we may not be able to visualize the bone. So if we think what static guides do and don't do, they may cause us problems. And if you look at the lower sec, the last thing written down there, just to use static guides, you may need extra surgical kits, again, adding extra thousands of dollars to the cost, extra time of your staff to sterilize and extra storage space just to have these in your office. When you think about planning, I look back at the days of learning Adobe Photoshop and other software for my computer. 
if you look at some of the software programs that are out on the market, some of them are very labor intensive to learn. The software that comes with the Navident, within three to four minutes, you can plan out a multi-tooth case with precision. And again, as David said earlier, and as we've done in our office, you can change that plan on the fly when there's different density in bone, or maybe the patient bit improperly and the teeth are in a different orientation, and you just have to change the plan for whatever reason, Navident gives you the ability to change the placement of the implant, which you couldn't do if you have a milled or printed guide that's fixed in its location. So this planning software comes with your hardware and is very easy to learn and very easy to teach your staff. It eliminates a lot of the issues that comes with some of the other softwares that's on the market. So if we look at what prosthetically guided implant placement gives us, what we need with some of the other systems is a wax up and a CT stent, again, as David went over. What we can do with the Navident system is we can use a CT with articulated patient's teeth in most cases and place virtual teeth and do all of that without having to need a prosthetically guided wax up. If the patient is missing teeth, yes, we need to go back to an Omnivac over a wax up, an ideal prosthetically guided tooth position. And we may need to and incorporate this into our CT scan so we can get the ideal tooth positioning. However, if we're now using this Omnivac as our surgical guide, again, as David showed, we only have an access point at the occlusal table. We can vary, very, very widely apically. We can vary apico-coronally and buccolingually in our implant position, which will not give us the accuracy that we want. What do we do if we're missing teeth? Again, our patients can bite differently. We may not have an ideally articulated model that matches in the mouth on the articulator with exactly what they're presenting with. So we have to take all this into consideration with what they have and what they need. And again, look at this patient in front, and this is one of the cases that Ziv and I will be discussing later this week for those of you who are in New York on either Friday or Saturday. We'll see how we treat this patient. So look at static guides. The Omnivac, what we used to use, gives you a sloppy fit and gives you problems with irrigation and visibility. If you put a sleeve in it, yes, we can get a better angulation of our implant, but again, we have problems with depth, and we have problems with irrigation and flap, or flap elevation. And again, similar issues with milled stent. We have problems with fit, and we have problems with expensive hardware and drilling systems. And again, the static guides need time. Even if you have a printer in your office, it can still take you hours, unlike somebody coming in, like David said, in an emergency basis, wanting or needing an implant right away. So let's take Mindy. Mindy has an area where we've done some guided bone regeneration. She lost a tooth due to endodontic failure. Is this a simple case? Well, very often in the posterior mandible, we have issues with the inferior alveolar nerve. We have an undercut in the lingual. And even though we start out with a large amount of graft, we lose some of that in time. And where the undercut is, we're going to want a wide implant where it's tapering down to give us the best prosthetic table, but limited interference. So what is the workflow? From the planning standpoint, we start looking for our anatomy. Then we're going to place our virtual restoration, place the virtual implant, get it the size and shape we want, and then go to the mouth. Once we have all this done, we can go over with our patient exactly what they're going to need in terms of implant placement, bone regeneration. So what you're seeing in front of you now takes literally minutes to plan out the entire case. So here with the Navident software, we see in green where the inferior alveolar canal was placed. We see the virtual tooth. We see where the virtual implant was placed. And then we can see how on the fly, we get the implant to the correct size, shape, and orientation so that we have the proper implant direction 
and we have the safety factor away from teeth, away from other implants, and away from our vital structures. Then, as David talked about the tracer, we have one tracer that's either affixed to the patient's head or affixed to the mandible, and then another device that's attached to either our handpiece, our piezosurgery, or other devices that Nevident is working on on an ongoing basis. Then, as again, as David pointed out, we trace the adjacent teeth. We want to mark where those teeth are to correlate that to our software. We trace anterior and posterior all around the buccal and lingual to just as if we were doing an intraoral scan for restoration or orthodontics to line everything up together. And then we calibrate. We calibrate the drill axis. We calibrate the drills to make sure all of our hardware is lined up with each other. Then we do an accuracy check. In this case, we're using a trefine. As Ziv knows very well, we like to sample the bone and see exactly what we're going to, what we obtained from our surgical procedure. And then we prepare the osteotomy, just like we would with any other surgical device, but it's very, very easy to do because we have no block to our irrigation. We have no impedance to our flap. So we can see everything. Only, what are we looking at? We're not looking at our patient. We're looking at the computer screen. So we're looking exactly at where our handpiece is on the screen to see exactly the angle and dimensions and direction we need. And as you can see on the screen, on the bottom left corner of the screen, the tip of the handpiece is exactly in the center of the red dot. And the osteotomy is being prepared right down the long axis of the implant. So this is a video shot not by a professional video crew, but it's going to show you in a very short time the implant osteotomy being prepared exactly where we need it. So the biggest problem we have with the guided navigation surgical procedures is that they go so quickly that we don't get many photos. But you can see the implant is going to be prepared directly down the center of the osteotomy as we planned it. And we finalize the osteotomy, place the implant. As we learned from Ziv and Dr. Shakrun and Dr. Pinto, we can place our PRF to thicken the tissue. But more importantly, we get the implant where we want it every time and quickly. The osteotomies take a couple minutes. We have full irrigation, full visualization. And as we see on the left where the plan was, you can see even without going to ultra precise radiographic techniques, the implant is exactly where we wanted it. Next case, what do you do here? What do you do if your good friend and neighbor near your office in Westchester had an implant fail, or here, where you have a tooth failing with no buccal plate? Or what about here, where you need ultra precision? How about here, if you have to explain to a patient where there's missing bone, where there are failing implants? You need ideal surgery to show the patient three-dimensionally. You need the software that will give your patient the proper education and you the tools to reduce your surgical risk and improve communication with yourself and the lab so you can get ideal implant placement. So let's take a look at one of these cases so we don't keep anyone who wants to watch the baseball game out too late. So as with any challenging case, we need to diagnose properly. We need to plan the case, educate the patient, and then execute it. So again, here's a colleague of mine, a periodontist, whose wife had an implant placed elsewhere, and the implant failed. Tissue looks great. If we're going with a flopless surgery, looks like we have plenty of keratinized tissue and plenty of bone. But often after an implant fails, when we do the 2D and the 3D diagnosis, we see not much left. So now we have to determine what happens before we place the implant. So we open the flap, and we see nothing. We see no buckle, no palatal bone. So we're going to take our surgical aesthetics, mineralized cancellous bone, 
hydrated in LPRF. We're going to make a block of sticky bone. We're going to use for bulk in this case to help protect it. O6 plus is a barrier and LPRF over it. Why PRF? Because we get increased angiogenesis and osteogenesis. So the question is, can we take that whole no buckle, no palatal bone? Can we regenerate bone? And can we do it in a predictable time? Well, we know the PRF will give us slow release of growth factors for up to a month. So we get primary closure, let it heal for five months, radiographically on 2D, we go from a large hole, one that looks pretty solid. Now we go into our Navident software. Again, we virtually place the tooth. We virtually place the implant where it needs to be. And we see that we may have to do a nasal lift. Again, as we learned from Ziv, very easy to do with the thick membrane. Within seconds, we get the implant placed where we want it. That's what we started with, and that's what we ended with. To make sure that we have enough bone, we use our Versa system, again, taught by my older brother. Make the bone plastic, get the osteotomy where we need it. We use an implant that has a bioactive calcium phosphate impregnated thread. We're going to put another LPRF block graft, more O6 plus and LPRF over it. And now we wait for healing. So what did we see today? We saw the tools to give ideal patient education, precise surgical guidance, no additional drill kits. We could take a patient missing a significant amount of bone, regenerate that bone volume, and quickly and precisely place that implant. And as you see in the bottom left, even with a little bit of a floor of the nose left. So there are not really many easy cases that we get these days. But if we take these patients and we educate them properly and diagnose them properly, we can treat them, we can decrease their surgical risk and increase our knowledge. We can place an implant even in a three-pack-a-day smoker with an OSTEL reading of 77, but knowing beforehand from the software and educating the patient that we were going to have to do a ridge jog in front, again, with our LPRF block. In this case, to give more bioactive growth factors, we're using a placental membrane. We're using the BioExclude from Snoasis. Why? Because we have all sorts of cytokines and growth factors that give us the ability to get better healing in the area. So again, we have to remember the maintenance, not only in our smokers, but in everyone. We will make sure that our patients keep the ideal hygiene, whether they use the Tepe program or Sunstar or any of the other programs out there. Make sure your patients are seen every three months. Treat them aggressively and early. Refer them to someone who can treat them if you can't, and be sure you know their risk factors, because if they lost their teeth once, they have a chance of losing their implants.